make a fight for it. Tina Queer, Mr. Chair, Tina Tato Kato. Mr. Chair, I, uh, I'm happy to take a short call on uh, the Social Security Amendment Bill Number Three. Uh, I guess um, not being a member of the uh, Select Committee, but probably more importantly, as a mother of two teenage sons about to uh, enter university next year, I feel it's probably appropriate that I get up and make a contribution. Mr Chair, I'd like to uh, talk specifically around section... Um, um, papers for Africa, Mr Speaker. Section 61EA of the Act, which ensures that students uh, who would be eligible for assistance um, of a student allowance, including its extra accommodation component, but who choose not to apply for that assistance, would be excluded from receiving the accommodation supplement. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I'm a firm believer that uh, investing in our young people in this country is definitely the role of the state, um, and there's plenty of research around that uh, uh, our student population uh, across the country are struggling. Uh, this is an opportunity to address that, and I am rather disappointed in listening to all the contributions tonight that the benchmark has been set at the uh, student allowance rate rather than at the uh, accommodation supplement. Um, and I'd be keen to hear uh, from the minister herself um, as to why uh, the benchmark has been set uh, low rather than, than high. Um, I understand that there, were, there have been two contributions to the select committee, uh, Mr Chair, uh, from the Dunedin Law Centre and the New Zealand University Students Association, uh, which I'm sure many of us in this um, House have been members. Um, they do a fine job and they clearly have got recent research that shows, uh, Mr Chair, that there is hardship faced by many of our students around the country. And Again, I'd be really interested to, to hear the Minister's uh, response to uh, why a organisation with the history uh, of the New Zealand University Students Association weren't consulted, I guess, in, um, in amending this, this Act, because clearly, um, Mr. S Mr Chair, they, they probably have a, a major contribution to, to offer, which would have meant that we would have had a probably more robust um, bill brought before the House to be discussed, uh, Mr Chair. But uh, uh, in reading, like many of the previous speakers, um, um, uh, I'm still of that view around uh, hearing the rationale uh, behind um, uh, incentivising our students, I guess, to, to stay in tertiary education as opposed to uh, opting out because they can get more from the accommodation supplement. I mean, I support that the bill's trying to address some of the loopholes, but uh, given the four years that it's been brought to the government's attention, I'd be also keen to hear uh, how many students have been caught up in the loophole, Mr Chair. And, and I guess, given that this is retrospective legislation, um, there are also unintended consequences of, of passing retrospective legislation. So I'd be keen to hear from the Minister herself on, on what would happen to those students. I guess I'm interested to know how many students are caught up and, and what will actually happen to those who have been, um, I guess, um, uh, have received the accommodation allowance as opposed to the student allowance, um, Mr Speaker. Um, but yes, I, I, um, I support, I guess, um, the contributions of this, this Act, but I caution the Minister um, and the government around ensuring we are investing in our students, uh, perhaps more than like what I see with this bill before the House, um, given the pressures of students uh, are under, not in terms of completing study, um, but at a very low uh, allowance, student allowance, with the cost of fees rising out of proportion um, uh, to, I guess, other supplements that, that may assist them, but also in terms of uh, GST um, that has risen, um, Mr Chair, and I guess 
It just uh, leads to the completion around uh, Mr Chair. Uh, Ron Mark. Mr Chair. Um, 